I printed 369 fine art photos and they all pretty much required the same three things. I'll give you those lessons in this video. Big idea number one. One of the most memorable days of my life was when I went for a ride on a nuclear submarine. Amazing experience. But if you're wondering what it was like, just imagine the fixtures and fittings of a caravan but with no windows. It really was brilliant though, as we dived down and did a little trip around the English Channel. My wife got to fire the torpedo tubes in a simulated attack on a fishing boat. I climbed to the top of the tower where I captured this photo and we were also lucky enough to actually have a drive. Now I was desperate to get this right and be good at it. I carefully listened to the instructions. I asked good questions, prepared as much as possible and the nerves and adrenaline were sky high as I took control of this 500 million pound nuclear powered Trafalgar class submarine. How did it go? I hear you ask. Well, it was a disaster. We started rolling, rising, going in the wrong direction. I tried to correct it and things got even worse. I lasted about 30 seconds before they literally dragged me out of the chair. Then my wife sat down without a care in the world, steered straight and true, made perfect turns, and they even let her dive down further. She absolutely nailed it. And it's such a typical example of where overthinking things and seeking perfection is an absolute path to failure. A far better and more productive strategy is to be like my wife and just go for it. And when it comes to printing, this is big idea number one. Stop waiting and just do it. Your power to reach your full potential as a photographer lies in taking action. But it's all too easy to wait, procrastinate and give in to that self-doubt that you won't be good enough. I speak to lots of photographers who have the idea that they're gonna start printing or they're gonna print more often, but they never do. Don't be a gunner because ideas are worthless and execution is everything. One of the concerns about printing comes from the inevitable costs involved. We do have to buy resources like ink and paper, but printing is one of the easiest ways to start monetizing your photography. We'll talk about that a bit later on in the video, but start small. If you put a four by six bit of photo paper into most standard A4 printers, you can already create lovely little bits of artwork. I will warn you though, do this a few times and you'll catch the bug and start looking at one of these incredible printers from Canon, who are the sponsor of today's video. Because when an A3 Plus or an A2 print comes rolling off the printer, it's an incredibly exciting and meaningful moment. It's said that printing photos is an art form unto itself, and I think this is true. It's not just a case of hitting print and bang, you're done. It is a technical process. This shouldn't put you off though. It's what makes it so interesting because you never stop learning. I still pick up something new every single time I print, and it's just about adding to your repertoire over time. We can learn from each other too. Not long ago, I was invited to attend a print workshop at Canon UK headquarters. It was a brilliant day with lots of printing tips, practical examples, and that sort of childlike excitement, seeing all the gear. But my favorite moment was a talk from Canon and Canson Infinity ambassador, Sanjay Jogia. Apart from being a brilliant photographer, I picked up two significant technical tips from him. The first quick tip is that if you ever want to blow up your image and print it big, make sure you do any sharpening after you have enlarged it. This avoids then also enlarging the sharpened areas, which could leave your final print with a very unnatural feel. The second tip is huge, and that is to use the pattern print feature in the professional print and layout software provided by Canon. This is an amazing feature because it's nearly always said that you have to buy a calibrated monitor to get color accurate prints, but this simply isn't true. I used to teach that you should first print small so you can make any adjustments without wasting too much ink and paper, but, Canon have taken this to the next level. So in the Canon professional print and layout software, load up your picture, select your paper and ICC profile, and then go to color settings. Come down to the bottom here, and we see this little button that says pattern print. 
Hit that and the pattern print tool opens and displays your picture with a range of minor adjustments to the color. So we just print this out. I would use A4 paper for this. Just make sure it's the same paper you intend to use for the final big print. And then we can look across the grid to see which one we prefer. Let's say it's this one here. Look at the numbers underneath and then we dial those in on the color settings. So cyan minus five, magenta minus five, and then yellow up to 10. The pattern print tool can also do the same for brightness and contrast, and you can adjust the size of the thumbnails and the variation between the instances to suit your needs. Once we've done all that, it's then time to hit print. It's always so exciting when the print starts to come out and you start to see your digital image come to life as it feeds out of the printer. So exciting and I never ever will tire of it. I'm really thrilled with this image and it's meaningful seeing it come to life because it was not an easy image to make. I was stood on the edge of this cliff in the middle of a storm trying hard not to let the Canon R5 here blow into the sea. In the end though, seeing this print in the physical form, all that effort feels totally worthwhile. If you like the look of the Canon and Canton Infinity workshop that I attended, why not come to the next one being held at the Canon showroom in Birmingham. There are two dates available on either the 22nd or the 23rd of May 2024 and the best part about this one is that I will be there giving a talk. So if you want to come along, hear me speak, hang out over lunch, get a couple of A3 Plus prints done and be given a pack of paper from Canson Infinity, then hit the link down below. And if you use the offer code FIRSTMANPRINT, you'll get £20 off, making it very good value for money. Overall, I think the technical aspects of printing can be just broken down into a few simple steps that you can sort of then expand on as you do more of your own printing. I've covered all of these in detail in this video here, but size is the first thing. How big do you want your prints to be? The Canon Pro 200 and 300 produce A3+, Plus, which is a lovely size uh, once it's framed and makes a beautiful piece of artwork. I use the Canon Pro 1000 here, and once you've experienced A2 size, it's hard to go back. Check this video out here, where I compare all three of these fantastic printers. Paper choice is important. Do you want a matte finish for your images? This works well for black and white, or these types of woodland scenes. Full gloss is great for highly saturated images like my water drop photography, but I most often use semi-gloss papers and I now pretty much exclusively use Canson Infinity papers and they just work perfectly with the Canon printers. My new favorite is this Barita Prestige 2 and it's pretty much the most premium paper I've ever experienced. Canson also supply you with ICC profiles for your printer. These let your computer simulate on the screen how the image will look once printed, which helps get accurate brightness and color. We've talked about that already with the pattern print feature, but I've always found even with a perfectly calibrated monitor that I need to increase the brightness before printing to compensate for the loss of the backlight from your monitor. A third of a stop works for me nearly every time. Borders, I make the majority of my prints with a border because it means when it comes to framing, you have some overlap to attach the mount and you're not going to crop any of your photograph. I do like borderless printing too though, because they maximize the use of the paper, which makes the picture even bigger with an extra wow factor. Software, I do all my printing from Lightroom Classic because I like being able to keep my print files organized in a collection as proofs. I then use Canon Professional Print and Layout as a plugin to make the actual print, but this also works with Photoshop and as standalone software, so you can use any image editor you like. Adam, what do you do with your prints? I get asked this a lot, so let's come at this from a couple of different angles, but spreading them all over the floor of a studio to make a good thumbnail is not 
a recommended use case. Growing up in the northeast of England, one of my photography heroes was Joe Cornish, who I imagine most of you will have heard of, and he's famous for his landscape photography in the area around where I grew up. I've since had the privilege of getting to know Joe and have worked with him several times, and he's always been incredibly good to me. But one thing he said that stood out amongst all others is when he's out in the field with his camera, he's not making pictures, he's making prints. I adopted this strategy several years ago now, and I feel like it's brought about the single greatest improvement I've had to my photography. It helps me slow down, absorb the moment, and carefully and intentionally craft a piece of artwork as opposed to just snapping a picture. So maybe rather than asking, what do you do with your prints? consider asking what your prints might do for you. And this is big lesson number three. On a more practical note, the first thing they can do is monetize your photography. If you are a fine art photographer, and by that I just mean the sort of person who tries to make meaningful work that might end up in a frame on someone's wall, then selling your prints is an obvious step. It can feel very scary putting yourself out there like that. And this feeling of imposter syndrome often leads to photographers pricing their prints too low. Have confidence in your photos and allow your work to find the right customer. Someone who is willing to pay what it's worth because it's providing value to them. Check this video out here to find out more where I broke down how to price your prints, taking into account uh, production cost, time spent and adding profit on top. Right, let's quickly follow the life cycle of another photograph. So I meet a mate in the Snowy Lake District, hike up to find a stunning spot, carefully compose an image of this frankly magical scene, make the picture, get really wet in the relentless snow, retreat home and edit the image, hire a big studio and then make the print in the middle of the floor. Now, apart from one or two unnecessary steps there, on top of everything else, what that print is now doing for me is backing up my photograph in physical form. Ask yourself, how much does all my work mean to me? Now ask, how much of that body of work is stored entirely in the digital realm? And then finally ask, am I happy with this scenario? Personally, I take a lot of comfort knowing that my photographs exist in the physical world. I keep these ones in a couple of A2 art boxes and have this kind of romantic vision of my great grandchild finding them in a cupboard one day in the future, dusting off the box, looking through them, getting just a little bit of insight into who their great granddad was. Maybe legacy is a more accurate description than backup. Another thing your prints do for you and for others is to provide a beautiful piece of artwork to sit on a wall. There are a variety of ways to display your photographs and the inks used in all these Canon printers are archive quality and will last for a very long time without fading, even when on display. With my own pictures, I actually just really enjoy making a collage by pinning or blue tacking the prints to the wall like a poster. It's cheaper, it looks cool, and you can rotate the images you display on a regular basis. Secondly, I'm also a fan of mounting the image to a board. This works really well for bigger prints and looks great, but the downside of this is they are exposed and susceptible to damage. Third is to frame them. Uh, this is my favorite option, but it's also the most expensive. You can get cheap MDF style frames on Amazon that look okay, but I've had these in the past and they just leave me feeling underwhelmed. I've also had frames custom made, which looks amazing, but again, the cost starts to rack up, especially if you ship them to customers. At the moment, all my prints ship without a frame, but I'm soon gonna start making my own frames from scratch, <laughs> and I'll be making a video about that, about the process from start to finish, so make sure you are subscribed for that. So let's follow the life cycle of one more photograph. I head out to a new location. It's the middle of a storm, extremely windy, very tough shooting conditions, but I capture a photo anyway. Edit the image, and no, I don't print out the back of my car this time. And no, I don't drag the Canon Pro 1000 up a hill to make a print again. This did happen and it really did fall over. But these things are way more rugged than people believe. 
And here is proof that the printer is still working perfectly as it completes the final stage of the photographic process. As all your hard work comes together, the challenges you faced, the struggles you overcame, it all leads to this fulfilling and meaningful moment. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch the craziest photography project I've ever done, or click here to watch the Canon printer shootout and see which one is right for you. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on another video very soon.